rolling here. So, hi. Uh, good afternoon or evening, since we're not really sure which it is. Um, I'm sitting up on uh, something. Sitting up on something feels good. Um, I'm also sitting on a pillow of Freddie Mercury's face because I'm a dork. Um, this is a yoga block, which you may or may not have in your home. If you do not have a yoga block, you are like most of the population. Go ahead and grab something that is very lightweight, that is, you know, maybe a couple of inches in one of its diameters, um, and that, like, maybe, like, even balling up a sweater or something would be reasonable, uh, a little ball or stuffy or something. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to use it a lot, but it'll be right. That off side. I'm able to start with this as well. She is. She'll be. I'm working in practice today. We're going to do a lot of lengthening and opening up at the front of the body and around the shoulders, and it's going to get really weird. It always does. I don't know why I even bother saying that anymore, just in case anybody wasn't prepared. <laughs> and uh, I was so I was listening to this podcast a couple of days ago, and it was um, so On Being is a podcast by Krista Tippett. It's a really interesting, um, usually some spiritual focused interviews, really cool stuff about just like good human practice. She was interviewing a mathematician and they were discussing paradox. Paradox shows up hugely in yoga. It's a major element of the things that we talk about the way that we work. So uh, this mathematician is discussing paradox, Krista. One of the big ones that are in the mathematics community right now it's the question, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg sort of thing. Like, are we humans just so intelligent and marvelous that we've been able to discover exactly how the universe works and then like discover all of these formulas and these patterns and like really crack the code? Or are we really creative and full of ourselves and have we made a whole bunch of stuff up and more often than not, it tends to hold up in most situations? probably a lot of both, but it's definitely a lot of us making stuff up. Which is fine if it does hold up, and it does help us discover things, and it does work, and it does create some benefits. Like, whether or not we've made up the formulas that have gotten an airplane to fly and a building to stand, they're flying and they're standing, so I'm okay with it. I don't really care if it's made up nonsense or that we've cracked some big code, right? And in yoga, our physical hatha yoga practice, the asanas, they were all made up. Every single one of them made up by humans. And especially over the last hundred years, where we've really gotten a little bit more into the physical part of the yoga practice, more and more stuff gets made up. The more that we discover about anatomy, the more stuff gets made up. And then the more you, that you get like creative, weird yoga teachers doing stuff to like metal in their living rooms, the more things get made up and the more bizarre they get. But the more creative we get about making some stuff up about ourselves, the more we discover in the body and about the practice, and it works, even if it's made up. Like, it helps you usually feel a lot better in your meat, but if it's able to get tuned into your body and into the moment and into your mindset, whether or not it's a bunch of made up stuff, it turns out to be pretty useful stuff. So I'm here for it, and I'm glad you're here for it too. Now we're gonna do some face brushing or made up stuff. It's to clear your, uh, it's a little bit of lymphatic stimulation, and it's also to clear the day off of your face. So put your index finger and thumb together, and then this spot at the bottom of your thumb, bring that to the center of your forehead, brush outwards towards your temples a few times. And then going from the sides of your nose out to your temples along your cheekbones. And your temples down to your chin along your jawline. And from the sides of your nose down to your chin and along your lap line. Bringing your fingertips underneath and behind your ears, there's a little soft spot back there. And 
there's a bony spot up above the soft spots and when you lift up from the bony spots it's a nice way to lift your spine that goes right where the skull and the spine intersect right between those little bony spots take another deep breath in breathe out relax your hands down into your lap if it feels comfortable to you can close your eyes just taking this time to take some long slow breaths turn into the body that you've brought to your mat today Um, to see if there's anything that you discover about how you're feeling, any place that you're going to want to pay special attention or any special you want to focus on or work on today. practice by letting loose some ohms together if you ever want to let the, the scream or death growl whatever you like and stay okay with you. start off by taking a nice big breath in your nose and exhale through your mouth again like that for three ohms open your eyes and we're going to start practice down on our backs. I mentioned that you might want to have a sump onto a yoga block or something like lightweight. Any of that's all good. Just make sure that it's nearby. We're going to start without it. You just want to be able to grab onto it. Go ahead and put your knees and down and then give yourself a little rock side to side. Holding onto your right leg now. Put <laughs> your left leg out long. Oh, so much zooming. The whole day. So just taking your right leg in and letting your left leg slide out. Let your hips soften. You're going to take your left hand to your right knee, your right arm out to the side. And then draw that left leg across your body so that you come into a twist. Be a big one, we're just starting off. And notice I leave my foot resting on my thigh. That feels better to my hip. One more breath out. Back to your back. Take your left leg in, go ahead and let your right leg slide out. Doesn't need to get straight. Have your leg very bent. Better for the back. Let it go where it feels good. Your left thigh falling. That nice long, slow breath. And using your right hand to guide the leg across the body. Open your left arm out to the left so that your chest is touching open. Belly soften. Back to your back, set your feet down, grab your object. 
Now you want it to be pretty lightweight because you don't want to make this too hard on yourself, but if you find that you have an object that is difficult, you want to set it down at any and that you're holding that. But I'm going to hold on to this on kind of its longer setting, but it doesn't need to be that long. We're going to keep the elbows a little bit bent and we're going to not elbows. Don't worry about getting into your flock or your object of a core. Try to reach it to the wall behind you as you breathe in. And then as you exhale, take it back up above your face. And we'll just do a couple with the upper body. Reach long, back up above your face. Now I can very easily get this block to the floor. I have very flexible shoulders, but I'm not going for the floor. I'm going for the wall behind me. About two more. Start to feel your upper abs warming up. Next time you bring that object above your face, you're going to move it to go in between your feet, and now I'm going to have it on a somewhat narrower setting. So right in between your feet or your ankles, and then you may have like some of the flesh of your thighs touching towards each other, but your thigh bones are not together because they've been separated by this object. They're still separated even if you squeeze your that object. You need to take breaks from this squeezing or breaks from any of this yourself that forward. You're going to take the feet and squeeze in towards that object, and you're going to reach that object up towards the ceiling. Then you're going to take your hands, and you're also going to reach them up towards the ceiling. Now, my hands and my feet do get a little bit close together, but I'm not trying to bring them. I'm reaching them both up towards a really big breath in. Your exhale, lower it down. Now, you can take the upper body out of this, especially if it's bothering your neck. Try a couple more times to lengthen up and lower it down, relax it. Again, up to the ceiling, lower it down, relax it. One more time, up to the ceiling. Cool. And take it down. And then put your hands down behind your bum. I will forewarn you whatever you think is six inches, go left. Don't want to go super far with this unless you're feeling super strong and you really want to get really wild with this i'm telling you it'll work just fine so this is actual six inch or eight inch kind of uh this so we're going to leave the head and shoulders down you're going to reach that block away from you and lengthen it about six inches further forward back up you're going to reach the block forward and lengthen it about six maybe eight inches forward and take it back up. And then do that one more time. And can you get that block squeezing your feet into it a little bit further away from you? You might get a little shaky. And then take it back up and just one more time. Slightly longer hold. So you're gonna reach it away from me. So I'm not trying to get to the floor. I'm trying to get my legs as long as I can. One more exhale. Oh, and bring it back in. Grab that thing. Bring your knees into your chest. That's the thing off to the side. Stretch yourself out. Reaching out and smooth both your hands, both your feet. Big breath in. Exhale, stop. And reach out, big breath in. Legs as you exhale. Then bring your knees in, give yourself a little squeeze. You're going to lift yourself all the way up. Roll over onto your hands and knees. If you have a block or an object or a stack of books that you ever use in your practice, you want to bring them up towards the front of your mat. But we're going to start off on our hands and knees. And you're going to take your right leg and you're going to just let it go back behind you with the toes on the floor. Now with the toes point, uh, pointed down to the floor, you're going to have an easier time of keeping your hips parallel. So lift the leg up, keep your toes pointed towards the floor. If your hip lifted up, your toes are no longer going to be pointed at the floor. So you want to direct that that way. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing this with the toes pointed at the floor. It helps to align the hips. It also helps to like strengthen and broaden the upper back, the back side of your body. But instead of that, I want to try to open up the front side of the body and the heart. So point those toes behind you now. You already feel like your chest is lifted. You're just a little bit longer. Go ahead and lower your right knee down. Slide the left leg back. 
toes facing down, your hips are even. You might even feel already like you can do a little bit more of this upper back opening. We're gonna do a little bit more front of the chest opening, lift the leg up, toes face down. And then as you lengthen the toes back, maybe you lengthen your chest forward a little bit more and then go ahead and lower it down. Now, if your wrists are tender, come up onto your fingertips or make fists, but try to keep your hands um, planted down firmly, not falling, but planted so that you're building up some bone density in your wrist. We're gonna go a little bit of a flow here. Reach the right toes back behind you, your heart forward, inhale. Exhale, left. Left leg reaches behind you, inhale. Exhale. Now your leg doesn't have to go up high, but you might play with that a little bit. Exhale, low. Inhale. Exhale. Think longer every time. Longer breath, too. One more time on each side. And bring your hands a little bit further forward and lower all the way down onto your belly. I'm gonna come up onto your elbows. Set your in sphinx pose. Now, as you push down into the tops of your feet, it's a little bit different than Cobra. You want your elbows forward so you're not having to work very hard to hold yourself up. Push down into the tops of your feet. As you do so, you're probably gonna feel like the thighs are getting turned on and maybe your kneecaps start to lift up away from the floor. Take another breath in. And breath out. Relax your legs. Roll over to one side for a moment. Just go ahead and rest your head down on your arm. You're gonna take your top leg, your bottom leg, if it's bent a little bit, you're gonna have a much easier time balancing. Try to reach back and grab your top foot behind your hip, not above your hip, right behind your hip. And then gently pull that heel towards your bum. It doesn't need to be a really big stretch. You just want to a little bit more time opening up this quad. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Gently release that leg and then just roll over to the other side. So you're just gonna lay on the other arm. Cool, this is the weird one with the mic, sorry about that. And then bend your top leg, pull it back towards your bum. Be mindful you're not pulling to the outer side of your bum. You don't wanna do weird things with your knee. Or do plenty of other weird things. Don't do weird things to your knee. Just pull your foot as close as it's gonna get towards your hip it doesn't need to be super close one more exhale gently release that leg and then come back onto your belly all right got that buddy sitting in place again you're gonna pop your bum up off the floor and you're gonna push your chest up off of the floor Good. and then you're gonna curl your toes under and press back into a downward facing dog this one's just for you to Get a little bit wiggled out in your hips and your heels, reaching from your armpits down into your hands. Try to relax your head. One more breath out. Then untuck your toes and lo lower your knees, untuck your toes like that, reverse it. And take your hands and interlace your fingers out in front of you. Bend your elbows a little bit. Drop your elbows down. You'll feel a little bit broader across the upper back. Now keep the elbows a little bit bent, but push your hands forward and tuck your belly back. I'm not rounding my spine. I'm just taking my belly and moving it towards the back side of my body. Keep it pulled back, reach your arms up. Keep your elbows wrapping forward, just like they were wrapping down a moment ago. Push your hands up, breathe in. Exhale, draw your belly. Inhale, push those hands up. Exhale, pull your belly back. One more time, breathe in. Breathing out. Gently release your arms down, release your hands. You're gonna crawl your hands forward, spread your fingers out and push your hands down so you're strong across your upper back again. Your elbows will wrap towards your thighs just like they were wrapping in front of you before and then press back up into downward facing dog. You're gonna take your right leg, it doesn't need to be high, but think long with it. 
It could be high. Long though. Take another big breath in. Then lower that right leg down. Take your left leg up. It doesn't need to be high. You could even see your toes and that's a-okay, but try to reach it a little bit longer. And then put it down. And then just one more time each side. Inhale, right leg lift. Exhale, lower. The left leg lift. Exhale, lower. Go ahead and lower your knees down. You're going to take your right foot forward. You want to get it pretty far forward. If it is a long ways down to put your left hand on the ground, grab something and put it underneath your left hand. You're gonna take your right arm up in the air, push down into your right foot. Try to reach your heart into both of your hands. Pull the backs of your ears out of your shoulders. One more exhale. Then take your right hand down. You're gonna curl your back toes under and lift that back leg up. Now, if this becomes uncomfortable or un unsavory to you, you can put the back knee down, that's okay. But it's a little bit easier with the back knee up to feel this lifting of your inner thighs together. And then reach through that back leg. Keep this, bring your right hand to your thigh or your right arm up. Reach again, from your heart into both of your hands. Don't let your inner thighs relax. Pull both of them up. Breath in. Breath out. And then gently bring your hands down. Lower your left knee back down. And then lift your arms up. Now, if you're really short in your stance here, you're gonna miss out on a lot of the opportunity in your back bend. So you wanna bring that foot a little bit further forward if you can. Take your arms behind your back, interlace your fingers. You don't have to straighten your arms, but you might. You're gonna reach your arms back and your chest up and forward. Maybe you even take your gaze up and forward a little bit. Keep pushing down in your front foot and lifting your inner thighs. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Release your hands down. You're gonna wiggle your right leg back. Round your fingers out, curl your toes under, press up and back in a downward facing dog. Reach from your heart down into your hands, try to relax the back sides of your legs. And then you're gonna take your left leg, reach it up in the air, make it long. Exhale, set it down. Inhale, right leg up in the air, reach it long. Exhale, set it down, and then both knees go down and your left foot's gonna come forward and you might put a block or a stack of books or a very sedentary cat underneath your right hand. And then you're gonna take your left arm up. Reach from the heart into both of those hands. Soften your belly inwards. Roll your right ribs maybe a little bit closer towards your left thigh. Deep breath in. Stay there as you breathe out. Then put your hands down, look forward. You're gonna take your back leg and you're gonna lift that knee up off of the ground, knowing that you can put it back down whenever your body needs you to. Lift those inner thighs. Reach down into both feet. And then left hand to your thigh or left hand up in the sky. Keep lifting those inner thighs because it's easy to get soft there. You wanna keep pulling up through that center channel of your body. My friend called it a river the other day. I love a deep breath in. Exhale. And both hands down. Lower your back knee gently. You're going to take your arms up. The lifting of your arms will help you feel like you're lifting your chest. You should feel like you're lifting your chest up in front of your back knee. If not, you're going to need to wiggle this foot further forward. Take your arms back. Interlace your fingers. Lift the heart up. Reach the knuckles down. Hips and heart forward. Arms reaching down and back. Drive that left foot down into the floor. One more breath in. One more breath out. Release your arms, set them down. Slide your left leg back. Get a little bit longer. You can always go all the way from plank on your toes. We're gonna lower slowly down the belly. Doesn't have to be smooth. 
And then wiggle your legs back behind you. Sneak your hands in by your lower ribs. Push the tops of your feet on your legs are active and then your chest is gonna lift up and forward. Now don't lift your shoulders up and then try to take the rest of you up with you. Lift your chest and leave the shoulders behind. Cool. Take breath in. Exhale, lower. Good. Then pump your butt up off the ground. Push your heart up off the ground. Back to downward facing dog. Release the backs of your legs. Let that tailbone float up. Push from your heart down into your arms. Relax your head. Be bobble head around a little bit. And bring your feet to your hands and your hands to your feet. Your fingertips to your shins. And then your heart forward, your arm bones pulling up and back and your tailbone reaching up and back. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. All the way up now. Lift your arms up. Let your hips shift slightly forward. The weight should be a little bit more in your toes. Lift all the way from your belly button up through your pinky fingers. Another big breath in. Bringing your hands down at your heart. And I'm just going to turn to face you so you can see what I got going on here. We're going to do another little shoulder stretch. Just leave your feet about hip width apart. Take your hands behind your back and then bring both of your hands over towards the right side of your waist. Now, your arm bones are in slightly different places, but they're both reaching down and back. One thing that happens here is a little bit of this. Tailbone back, belly forward. I'm going to tuck the tailbone down and just gently draw that belly in. doesn't need to be at the point where you lose your breath, but try to keep it a little bit more connected. And then your right ear is going to drop down towards your hands, towards your right shoulder. Take a breath in. On your exhale, roll your nose down towards your shoulder. Keep lifting the front of your pelvis. On your next exhale, your chin goes down towards your chest. And then you relax your arms and lift your head up. Move the hands to the other side. Pin your elbows back as much as they're going to go. And then lift up the front of your pelvis. Release your left ear over towards your left shoulder. Take a nice big breath in. On your exhale, your nose down towards your shoulder. Stay there as you breathe in. Chin down to your chest as you exhale. Go ahead and lift yourself back up. Release your arms. Now you're going to bring your feet in together so that they touch. You're going to take your hands, you're going to make like Charlie's Angels hands where your index fingers are up and the rest of your fingers are wrapped in, and then you're going to reach your arms all the way up. Get a little bit taller, squeeze your inner thighs, feel the weight going more forward towards your toes. Another breath in, get a little taller still on your exhale side, then up and over towards your right. Your inhale, come up and on your exhale side, then up and over towards the left. Keep squeezing those inner thighs, lifting up, inhale, exhale, the right. Inhale to the center, exhale, the left. Inhale to the center, exhale. One more time to the right. Inhale up. Exhale to the left. Come all the way back up. Release your arms. And then let your feet separate. In fact, let your feet a little bit more than hip width apart. If your shoulders are feeling cranky when you just leave your hands at your hips, you can even let your arms come down. That's totally fine. But what you might do is interlace your fingers. You can even leave your hands back bend your knees to start off with start taking your belly down towards your thighs maybe you let those arms float up above your head they don't need to they can stay here they can go here try to relax your head one more exhale release your arms down to your hips Draw your belly in, lift yourself all the way back up. And then that little object that you had before, if you hate it, don't worry about it. If it's not going to work, if it's not going to stay in between your ears, it's fine. You're just going to have to pretend. Stick with me on the you don't want to actually squeeze your knees together here. So I'm going to grab this object and stick it in between my knees on a fairly narrow setting. I'm just trying to set up so that maybe it isn't like my ideal chair position, but I've got um, thigh bones directly above my ankle bone. Then you're going to sit back into your hips. Right. 
reach your arms back. If you want to interlace your fingers, great, I love that. If you want to reach back like you are going to go um, have a really fancy dive, that too. Reach your arms back. So chest goes for my tailbone goes back. I'm going to squeeze my thighs and towards each other, but I'm not actually getting the thigh bones any closer together because I've got this thing. Using my inner thighs. Up and back. One more exhale. Then stand yourself up. You're going to keep lifting those inner thighs up and in. It's going to take your weight slightly forward. You're going to take your arms up. Start to take your hips and your heart forward to such a degree that you create this circular energy with your body that eventually takes the arms back. And you can have very wide arms if that feels better in your shoulders. Squeezing that block up to that center river of your body. Big breath in. And relax yourself back to center. Just drop your arms down. Let your arms swing back and forth a few times. Just loosen them up. Take your thing and set it off to your side. You're going to take your right foot forward and your left foot back. Finding warrior one. Make sure that you're not standing one foot directly in front of the other. You want a little bit of space. Back toes face mostly forward. Lift your arms up. Then you're going to take your left arm and reach it up more. Your right arm, you're going to reach it down. You're going to reach these in both directions like you're trying to touch both the ceiling and the floor at the same time. Big inhale. And exhale. Take both arms up. And then straighten your front leg. Reach your arms back. You have an option to make your Airplane wings, going diving hands, or hands at your hips, or arms interlaced behind you. I'm going to do hands at my hips. So start with your chest lifted. Pull both hips up. Then your chest forward. Try to keep your front leg straight. And then when the ego says, but if we bent it and we hunched forward, we could get our nose on our knee, you say, ego, what the hell is the point of putting my nose on my knee? Why? not really getting my hamstring a good stretch. It's not helping my balance. It's not helping to open my chest. Your stupid nose position does not serve me. There will be other times you can put your nose on your knee. This isn't the one. You want to feel length into both of your legs. It's going to help on the next step. One more exhale. Go ahead and lift yourself up. You're going to step your back foot up. I'm going to bring your feet about four inches or so apart. And then bend to your knees. Sit your hips back. You're not going to bring your knees in together to touch. Just as if you had that object still, you're going to feel your inner thighs pulling up and pulling towards each other. And then reach your arms out and forward. Really big breath in. Really big breath out. Lift up. Feel the hips going forward. Lift those inner thighs, the fronts of your pelvis, and then relax. Drop your arms down. Let them swing. And then going to the other side. So warrior one, taking your right foot back this time. You're going to take your arms up. A little bend into that front knee. Back toes turn up. Back leg is pretty straight. If you have to bend your leg, try turning your toes a little bit further forward. Sometimes that helps. And then reach your right arm up and your left arm down. And then reach them in opposite directions as much as you can manage to communicate that with the body. The body's probably going, what the hell? That's fine. You could use a little of that. It probably makes you go, what the hell, plenty, doesn't it? Take a big breath in. Big breath out. And then take your arms up. Straighten your front leg. Reach your arms back so you can have interlaced fingers, hands at the hips, or airplane arms. I'm going to do airplane arms this time. And send the chest forward. Two long straight legs and an open heart. And maybe a lot of wobbling going on. That's okay. Try to keep your breath long and steady. Big breath in. Big breath out. Lift yourself up. 
You're gonna step your right foot forward, align your feet so that they're just a couple of inches apart. This time you're gonna reach your arms back, your hips back, and your chest up and forward, your inner thighs up and back. One more exhale. And drive into your feet, lift your hips up and forward, reach your arms up and out. And then relax your arms down. Okay. So this is one of the big things that we wanted to work through today was to do warrior three. I talked a little bit before when we were on our knees about having your toes pointed at the ground. That helps a lot because what often happens when we lift a leg up is we start to go here. This is not necessarily wrong. Half moon, this is where our hips are, but half moon is hard. Right? One of the reasons that half moon is hard is that you don't have a squareness to the hips. That's why we say turn the toes down. But when I say turn your toes down, the energetic shift is that your body wants to do this instead of this. And we're going for that one today. We're going for the lifted chest, we're going for the length in our body, we're going for the openness to the front of the stomach. But since the arms reaching out is crazy pants, we're gonna go arms reaching back because it's a little bit better for my back and core health. If you really love the warrior three with your arms out, I won't stop you, go for it, but I'm gonna say do it this way. So stand on one foot, the other toes are back. They are pointed down on the floor. You're just on the very, very tip, tip, tips of your toes. And then you're gonna reach through that back leg and send your heart forward. And then as you take your chest forward, you do not need to get parallel to the ground. Reach that back leg back. You started off with squared hips. It's gonna get weird, but try to keep them squared. Right? Maybe come up for a moment and then try to go back into it. Just take those little two chances. You can take five chances, I don't mind. You shouldn't mind either, by the way. And then stand yourself up, set your foot down. I always say, I don't mind. Don't you mind either. This is your practice. Like, you came to do the weird ass yoga thing because it's supposed to make you feel good, right? So find ways to make it feel good for you. Okay, other side. Questions, comments, existential angst? Okay, warrior three. We, we, do, we do a little bit of warrior three, so this isn't, isn't too wild. But see how that energy feels. So you're up on your toes. Lift the inner thighs, reach into that back leg, reach your arms back, your heart forward. Find something to look at that's not moving, it will help. Especially if it's not down directly on the floor because then your hip's gonna go wonky, see? Try to look out in front of you a little bit. Try it a second time or a third or a 40 second. Reach that leg back, see if you're still breathing. And then stand up. Wiggle the things out that get sticky and vaguely unpleasant. And then you're gonna come up towards the front of your space. We're gonna go back to a down dog. I'm gonna say do another one of those three-legged down dogs where you reach your leg back. It might feel a little bit different now. It might feel like you're just really glad it's your last one. That's okay too. Stand your feet underneath your hips. Lift your arms all the way up. Big breath in. Exhale, fold down. Plant your feet and walk, plant your hands. Your feet were planted. Walk your feet back to the back. A nice little down dog. Push strong. Armpits into those hands again. You're going to take your right leg. You're going to reach it back and then reach long through that leg. Ooh, slippery mat. Then set it down. Then take your left leg. Reach it long back behind you. Set it down. I kind of lied to you. You're going to do it one more time, but one thing's going to be different. You're going to bend the heel towards your hip and open that knee up. This should release the front of your hip a little bit more than stuff that we've done so far. And then go ahead and set that right foot down. Two strong arms, left leg reaches back, heel to your tush. Now turn those hips open, it's just gonna be a little different. And then go ahead and set your left foot down, lower your knees down, pull your hips back, maybe widen your knees a little bit. Find child's pose. Big breath in. Breathing out. Just 
start to lift yourself up. You're gonna bring your right foot forward. You don't have to get this leg totally straight. We haven't done a lot of hamstring stuff. We have done a bit of it though. If you really want to drop your nose down towards your knee, I told you that sometimes that's fine. You can do that if you really want to, but I would suggest trying to reach your heart forward because you may notice if you try both of them, holy crap, this does so much more to open my hamstring than try and bring my nose down my knee. Test that out. Feeling might be somewhat like the breakdown in the music at this point. Very dramatic. One more exhale. And then bend into your knee. You're going to come up, hands on your front thigh. Now, you should have done a lot of work to open up this thigh and this hamstring so you can get a lot more distance between your front foot and your back foot. So try keeping that reach your arms up. If you want to interlace your fingers and take Charlie's angel hands, you can do that. Lift up the collar through your heart. Push down in that front foot. Take a really big breath in. You have a little bit more space to open up that heart. One more inhale. One more exhale. And gently release your hands down. Bring your right leg back. And then send your left foot forward. Lots of perhaps manual adjustment to get there. I like that foot wiggled out good and long in front of me. You can totally draw in towards your leg if you insist. My suggestion would be to extend your heart forward as much as you can. You might have to bend your leg a little bit to make that okay in your hamstring. And to make it okay in your body. I haven't said this in forever. One of the things one of my first teachers said, she said, don't, like, don't make the, the body fit into the pose that's not right for it. So many, so many different bodies. Not as many poses. Try to make the pose adapt your body. Because the person that made up the pose probably had a much different body than you do. Even if it was just like a little bit different. In such a way that you need to make a small shift. Make that small shift. more exhale and then put the bend into the front knee you're going to reach your arms up do whatever you want with your hands maybe it's that steeple fingers vira mudra is what it is called in sanskrit but i i don't like to quiz people on different languages while you're also doing strange things with your body so we call it charlie's angel hands or steeple fingers or that thing lift your heart your arms up and forward, drive that foot down. Lift your inner thighs. That circular energy, your hips go forward, the energy press up. One more deep breath in. See there as you breathe out, see what happens. And bring your hands down. Bring your legs back. And then you're gonna go down onto your back. Whatever you like. I will warn you, I am gonna ask you to get up again. <laughs> A bit sorry where you'll get plenty of rest in. Plenty of time here. Wiggle your feet high. A little bit wider than your hips. Reach your arms back. You can leave them there. I like to hold elbows. You are blocking. Thank you. That's a spot. Okay, so feet are wider than hips. You're going to lift your toes. Put both of your knees over towards the right. My left knee is nowhere near the ground. Ideally, neither is you. We're going to reach that knee away from you. And maybe you relax your inner armpits until the outer armpits stretch and keep your toes up towards your shins to help the skin in your Oh. And more exhale. And take your legs back up. And then your arms go back and you lift your toes up to your shins and then you let your knees go over to the other side. Now my, my head lifts, my knee reaches away and I stretch out the front of this thigh in my head. Try to relax your inner armpits. Reach the outer armpits. If that sounds dark, doesn't make sense, try to relax your arm bones.
Where's Bracken? Where are they now? And back to the center. And you're going to slide your legs out. The next face, reach your arms back into the next face. And then put your right ankle over on your left ankle. So both legs are over to the left. Have your right arm over towards the left arm. Both of your arms are over towards the left. And you might even pull on that right arm a little bit. Just let your right hip drop down in the direction of the floor. And maybe your belly button starts to creep over towards the right a little bit. It's not actually going to move. But if that helps the way that it feels, that's a nice way to think about it. Just stretching long through this right side. One more exhale. Separate your legs and separate your legs come back to that X shape. Try to move your left ankle over to the right ankle. Move your left arm over to the right arm. You're gonna hold that left arm, reach back long. Let your belly roll over towards the left side if that makes any sense whatsoever to you. Just find space on that leg. Thank you. Uh, good, good kisses. Thank you. Okay, that's a nice kisses. One more exhale. <laughs> Put your hand, body in my hands. Okay. Spread out to that X shape. Take a big breath in. Big exhale. And then bring your feet in. They're going to come up real close to your hips and about hip width apart. You can take your hands down by the side of your tush and just touch your fingertips to the to the top or the outsides of your heels. Great. Now, you're going to do some magnetizing of your thighs together, but you're not going to magnetize them so that they move. There are magnets, but your legs are stronger than the magnets. So just like when you had the thing in between your legs, in fact, if you wanted to grab the thing and put it in between your legs for this first round, you could do that. Just gonna make sure that you don't actually move your knees in closer. That's attractive. Okay, and then arms are down by your sides. Snuggle your shoulders underneath your heart. Feel that the heart already lifts up. The more we wiggle these shoulders underneath the heart, the more that those scapula are gonna give this boost and a lift to the chest and to the spine. Keep your gaze straight up in front of you. If you wanna watch me first, then I would recommend watching and then doing. Just so you don't do weird things to your neck or neck. Push down into your feet, lift your hips up. You're going to wiggle the arm bones on again. Again, shoulder blades supporting the spine. If you can hold hands underneath your back, you can do that. You can also hold your hips. You can hold your hands down onto the floor. I'm going to squeeze my knees towards each other without knees towards each other. Push the feet down and then reach the knees away from you, lengthening the fronts of the hips. And then go ahead and relax your hips. I need two more. You didn't try it with the thing, and now you want to try it with the thing, you might try it with the thing. Push down into your feet, hips up, arms underneath. Find something to do with your hands. Knees forward, inner thighs in, heart up to your nose, breathe in. Release, exhale. My last one without the thing. Arms down, push down, wiggle under, connect hands, connect feet. Hips connect the knees from the heart. Lengthen that as much as possible. Breathing in. Relax your shoulders. Slowly lower your head. Back down to the floor. And bring your knees into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Oh, let the heart rate come down. These back bends can be fairly invigor invigorating. I forgot to say before we did it, I feel like for weeks and weeks and weeks I keep saying, oh, we didn't do a lot of backbending today, so your bridge might not be very deep. Well, you might have noticed yours was a little bit deeper this time because I really did quite a lot to prepare for it. I hope that felt good with you. Okay, open your arms and let your knees roll over towards the right side. Just find a gentle twist. Have done a lot of back bending. Be a little softer, maybe. Legs a little. Just our breath often. And 
bring your knees over towards the other side. Relax your right shoulder open or the opposite shoulder open. Let your belly soften. your knees back to your chest, give yourself a little squeeze, rock a little bit side to side. I did say we are going to get back up again, so gently lift yourself up. We're going to do a little inversion. If you have a wall nearby, you can follow me. If you don't and you have like a chair or like a couch, you put your legs like up on the seat of the couch or your bed or whatever you have around. And then you're going to want to, instead of that, if that's not um, your work, you want to find a wall, you're going to come over and you're going to put butt as the wall as possible. Bring your close to the wall as I can. I am in prime position for dog snuggles the whole rest that I'm here. Okay. And then you're going to have your legs sliding up that wall. Now, if your toes start to feel tingly, if it starts to feel terrible, if you hate this, come on out of it. You don't have to stay long, you could stay a long time. But getting upside down can be really helpful. It helps to center us and uh, ground us whenever we're feeling like everything is really chaotic. Because life can be really chaotic. Especially when we're in like changes of seasons and get all this new light and energy and wanna do all the things and get a little overwhelming. Hmm. Never forget I once, I was younger and I was like, oh man, my mom was right about stuff. Then I realized, oh man, my mom was wrong about a lot of stuff. I was like, shoot, my mom had no idea what she was doing. No adults have any idea what they're doing. We are all just making this up. And it was one of the most terrifying and liberating things that I had ever realized. Really, we are all just making Sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it makes sense and sometimes you're like, what the hell was that? But it's okay, because you might discover some really cool things here on the way. Spend a couple more minutes in this inversion. Like I said, if you need to bend your knees towards you, your feet feel kind of weird or tingly or you feel not okay with this, then make adjustments that make sense to you. short shavasana, just rolling over, letting yourself sprawl out on the floor. Make a transition to any pose that is restful and easy and soft in your body. A 
have a couple minutes left before we all wrap up together. Come back to your breath. You still got legs up the wall or on the couch. Start to bring your knees down into your chest. No rush. Eventually, start to roll over to one side. Taking a moment to pause in gratitude for being able to practice here together, to hang out and spend this time with yourself. And when you're ready, coming up and finding your own version of a comfortable seat, you sit however it makes sense in your body. It doesn't make sense to yoga. Bring your hands to your heart. your heart up. Feel the practice, releasing one more all growl or sin. Deep breath in. Days. I know a couple folks here from EWF. Um, I do do these classes by donation. If you're not from EWF, so I've got those that stuff on all of the pages. But let me know if you need anything. Else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was actually a really challenging for me right now. Oh, yeah, good. Well, good. Yeah, you're get right up right. and do things. And, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm glad you made it. Thanks for sticking around. Have a good evening. Oh, good. Good. Bye. Bye, Bye Raina. Is that your Vassar, Vassar shirt? Yeah, are you going? I have one of those. I can't go tonight. I'm just so wiped out, but I would love to see them soon. Yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a great show. Stuff up soon, so. yeah. Thank you, yeah. Miranda. Thank you so okay, much. Bye. Uh, have a good one. Yeah.
We missed it. I'm gonna go see Robin. Oh yeah. I think we just missed it. We missed the class. I totally thought it was seven. Oh well. <laughs> I'll post it. You can do it later. Okay, okay, yeah, we'll just watch it. All right, thank you. Oh, how often no. do you do these? I'm gonna see you guys at High Water Mark in a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you. <laughs> Have fun, you guys, tonight. All right. Bye. 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 Good to meet you, Leanna. Thank you. Have a good one. Oh.